At a particular point in time, Mr. Beaks was the largest restaurant chain in West Africa with over 175 restaurants across 40 cities in Nigeria and Ghana. The site of buildings with the yellow bee and the red background was a site that brought happiness and a craving to have your stomach filled because it was a home away from home for everyone regardless of their age, religion, ethnicity or social class. But as the years rolled by, Mr. Biggs became a shadow of what it used to be. So what changed? How did it get so bad that UAC had to sell about 50% stake to a foreign company? This crazy truth about Mr. Biggs is a story filled with greed, negligence, business suicide and rivalry. So sit back and relax as we journey through the crazy truth about Mr. Biggs. In the year 1985, the Nigerian landscape was undergoing a massive transformation as the then head of state General Muhammad Buhari was overthrown in a palace coup by the chief of army staff General Ibrahim Babangida amidst all of this transformation was when the seed of what would become one of Nigeria's most iconic fast food brands was being planted. UAC Restaurants, a subsidiary of UAC. Now for those who don't know what UAC means, it means United Africa Company. UAC had been exploring opportunities to diversify and expand its business operation. The concept of fast food was still relatively new to Nigeria as at that time. But UAC restaurants saw an opportunity to introduce a new dining experience to Nigerians. Their sole aim was to provide good food, a welcoming environment, plus a consistent customer experience catering to local tastes while also introducing new culinary experiences to the urban population and their evolving lifestyle just like McDonald's did in the United States. And so, in the year 1986, the first Mr. Biggs outlet opened its doors in the bustling metropolis of Marina, Lagos, Nigeria. Enjoy your new world of experiencing delicious snacks, Mr. Biggs. The restaurant was strategically located to initially attract office workers and business people, providing a convenient and welcoming environment for them to eat and have conversations simultaneously. And over time, with its distinctive signage, Mr. Biggs quickly became a recognizable brand to the point that an outing to Mr. Biggs was the prize for doing well in school because there were varieties of fun activities children could partake in, like playing and having fun at the children's playground, after which children will move on to read the Super Strikers comics that got them hooked for hours. Also, it was the perfect date location for lovers. Mr. Biggs has always been a major part of my story. It was at Mr. Biggs I first met their father. And you will also find families there in their numbers during festive seasons like Easter and Christmas and on a weekly basis after Jumat prayer on Fridays and church service on Sundays. You know, with all this attention and accolades they received, it made them feel like the king of the market and this made them see themselves as the McDonald's of Nigeria, which truly they were at that time. But little did they know that while they were basking in the feeling of being an industry leader, a chain of competition was rising fast and this chain of competition would play a part in turning Mr. Biggs into a shadow of what it used to be. So a quick one, after watching this video till the end, kindly like drop a comment and subscribe to the channel for more videos such as this thank you so much i really do appreciate now let's get back into the video after over 10 solid years of being the market king mr biggs had laid the foundation and established the fact that a quick service restaurant market in nigeria was not only possible but it was also highly profitable. Consequently, other fast food chains sprung up, giving Mr. Biggs a run for its money. So therefore, with the outbreak of other restaurant chains like Sweet Sensation in the year 1994, Tasty Fried Chicken in the year 1996, and Tantalizers in the year 1997, Mr. Biggs went on a rebranding spree in order to maintain its status 
So it devised means to lure new customers and also keep old ones, which was one of the reasons it saw the need to come up with new slogans over the years like what a delicious experience, good tastes, always good. At some point, the letter B on the company's logo had to be rebranded just to appear new and better to the general public. The pressure was so much on them to the point that in the year 2002, they went into a partnership with Mobile Oil, an oil marketing giant, which meant anywhere you saw a mobile filling station, you would most likely have your fuel tank filled and your stomach filled also. The partnership was brilliant and mutually beneficial. For Mobile, it gave them an edge over competitors because it gave customers the chance to kill two birds with one stone by making a single stop for both food and fuel. On the other hand, even if mobile customers were not initially interested in getting food, the sight of a Mr. Big's restaurant plus the aroma from inside the restaurant was definitely irresistible. You know, later that same year in 2002, Mr. Big's franchising model was conceived. A reputable worker was sent to Scotland to study the operations of quick service restaurant chains that had global dominance like McDonald's. When she returned to Nigeria, she advised the adoption of a model that featured a mix of franchising and homegrown branches. Now to put this into perspective, it meant that 10% stake of branches nationwide would be owned by franchisees, while the other 90% would be owned by UAC itself. In fact, they believed they had struck gold and diamond because this was about to make them a more viral and everywhere you go kind of brand. It meant you will start to see Mr. Beats on almost every street because they give random investors total permission to use the name Mr. Beats to open outlets and sell food across the country. So top guys at UAC began giving out Mr. Beats franchises to their wives, side chicks, friends and so on without ensuring that these people were adequately qualified to run the business and this obviously meant there would be brand dilution and a drop in standard will become the norm. And obviously, just as you predicted, things began to fall apart. Mr. Big's expansion and franchising was initially widely seen to be successful in Nigeria and Ghana as at 2006. However, things started falling apart when they became unable to uphold the reputation of excellence that made people love them. While a greater number of franchisees supported the expansion plan, they failed to see that it also adversely affected quality control. Franchisees would do things their own way or cut corners to save costs, which is why the more they expanded, there was hardly a unified Mr. Big standard nationally or even across the same city anymore. Now to put this into perspective, the Mr. Biggs in Maryland would have a completely different menu from the one at Ogudu. And just as some of us know, the distance between Maryland and Ogudu is about 3 kilometers, which is not that far. Their biggest seller, which was meat pie, was nothing to write home about anymore because the one sold at Victoria Island would taste completely different from the one sold at Ikorodu. So it just felt like every outlet had different chefs doing experiments with our taste buds and that is so unacceptable. So therefore customers had to search elsewhere since Mr. Biggs could no longer provide constant quality experience across all outlets. And you know the funniest part in all of this was that UACN intentionally cut franchisees loose from their supply chain and allowed them to find their own supplies. And sincerely, it was not surprising when many franchises started backing out based on claims that the hardship of operating a restaurant business in Nigeria was unbearable and they cited issues such as unreliable power supply, cutthroat electricity bills, supply chain issues, unnecessary government levies, as well as the familiar issue of workers playing smart and stealing from the business. And then in 2013, something surprising happened. A leading food brand in South Africa, known as Famous Brands, bought a 49% stake in UAC restaurants. 
Mr. Big's parent company. By this time, the restaurant sales and national presence had already started dwindling. Perhaps UAC hoped that Famous Brand will restore the restaurant to its former glory. Famous Brand was equally excited to be partnering with UACR in light of their ambition to increase their African footprint and reach. Despite the fact that it started like a promising partnership, Mr. Big's reach continued to recede and by 2015, its number of locations had decreased to 153 outlets. Amidst all of this, in July 2019, the brand tried to revamp once more with the launch of express kiosks at a few strategic points in Lagos, taking a cue from Chicken Republic and Sweet Sensation. The kiosks were a brilliant, inexpensive strategy for targeting the city's high pedestrian traffic, but it did not last for long because customers started complaining again that the food and snacks are not what they used to be. With all of that being said, you know I am curious, assuming Mr. Biggs carries out a complete overhaul of not just its menu but its entire management to fast thinking Gen Z's and millennials who understand the current market vibes, tastes and business model. Do you think Mr. Big still stands the chance to reclaim its position and dominate the market again? Especially now that we have a good number of brands trying to dominate the market. So let me know in the comments section. And hey, before you go, you know I just spoke about domination right? So why don't you click on the video on your screen? to watch a detailed documentary about a man who dominated and controlled Nigeria from 1993 up until he passed on in 1998. Thank you for sticking to the end, I really do appreciate you and I will see you shortly in the next video.